Okay, this is problem P1.56 from chapter one. It deals with a cone plate viscometer, and you can see by the asterisk that it's considered a difficult problem. It considers a device whereby you rotate this cone, and by measuring the total moment or torque M required to drive the cone, you can determine the viscosity of the fluid that's trapped below the cone and a fixed surface. So assuming a linear profile, as the problem says, so a linear profile from the fixed surface to the cone, derive an expression for the fluid viscosity as a function of the torque, m, the uh, total outer radius of the cone, r, the angular velocity, omega, and the angle, theta, where the fluid is trapped between the solid surface and the cone. So the approach we're going to take here is we're going to calculate the shear stress at a point that's located at a distance r, and then I'm going to apply this to a differential area dA, and then integrate that from 0 to capital R to get the total torque m on the uh, required to drive the cone. So let me scroll down. Here I've pre-drawn a diagram of the cone, uh, showing the angle theta greatly enlarged just to make it more visible. The vertical coordinate is y, and the fixed surface here would be y equals 0. So at some arbitrary radius r, little r, uh, I'm going to consider the velocity here. The fluid, whatever fluid is, it sticks at the cone, and so it has the same velocity as the cone at that location. So the velocity there is going to be omega r. And then the velocity decreases linearly, and I've shown the arrows here, until we get down to the fixed surface, where because of the no-slip condition, we have no velocity. So I'll write in here that we have no slip. Just like up at the cone, we have no slip. At radius r, we have height above the solid surface h. This height varies, of course, as you move out along the cone. But we can calculate the velocity gradient now. du dy the vertical change in the velocity, that's just equal to v over h, which is equal to omega r over h. But as I say, h varies with radius, so if this is radius and this is h and that's theta, then we can get a relationship between h and r by noting that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so h over r. So h equals r tan theta. And we can make that substitution into there. And we get du dy equals omega r over r tan theta. We notice that the radius cancels, so it's just omega over tan theta for the velocity gradient. Now we're going to assume a uh, Newtonian fluid, so we can now calculate the uh, local shear stress tau, tau equals mu du dy, and so this becomes, assuming a Newtonian fluid, that uh, the shear stress is proportional to the velocity gradient and the constant proportionality is the uh, dynamic viscosity, then we get mu omega over tan theta.
Now I'm going to scroll down. And because it's difficult to draw on this tablet, I've pre-prepared this diagram. And uh, what we're considering is a differential area dA on the cone. And this is the differential area here. And this little differential area has length along the side of the cone, dL. And I've, in the bottom view here, I've tried to show, show that area. And so if this cone is rotating in this direction, there'll be a shear stress tau opposing that on that area. The area here, dA, is the circumference, so 2 pi r, where r is the, the radius, times the incremental thickness. Now you might tend to think that's dr, but actually you've got to look up here that that we're looking on the bottom view you're seeing a projection of that uh, view so but on the cone the length is is dl. But dl and dr are related quite easily. If you draw a triangle where this is dl and this is dr and of course that's the angle theta then you can see that dr equals dl cos theta. And we can make the substitution in here. And you get 2 pi r dr over cos theta. We're converting this to dr because we want to integrate with respect to the coordinate r from 0 to r. Now we have the area and we have the shear stress on that little incremental area. We can multiply them together. Shear stress times area gives you your shear force. Let me move down. So the shear force, df, equals tau dA. And if we scroll back, we can see that for tau we have mu omega over tan theta and you can see dA there. So we have mu omega over tan theta and then for dA 2 pi r over cos theta. But we can note that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. And so if we make that substitution in there, you can see that the cos thetas are going to cancel. So df, the differential force on that little area, becomes 2 pi just rearranging a little bit, mu omega, oops, I forgot a dr up here, didn't I? Uh, r dr upon sine theta, noticing that the cos thetas cancel. Now we can calculate the differential moment on that area. This little differential area is at radius r, and we have a force df, so the shear moment, if you like, dm equals f, or df times r. So our differential moment is going to be 2 pi mu omega r squared dr 
over sine theta. Now we can integrate this to get the total moment. The total moment or the total torque on the uh, cone is going to be m equals the integral from 0 to capital R of that incremental uh, moment. So making the substitution here, we go to a new page, we get m equals, and I'm going to bring some, some of the terms outside of the integral sign because they're constants. where all of these terms here are not functions of r, so they can come outside of the integral sign. And so this is a really simple integral. We get 2 pi mu omega sine theta r cubed upon 3, and that's got to be evaluated between 0 and r. And so m equals 2 pi mu omega sine theta. You're going to have a 3 on the bottom and an r cubed on the top. But we're after, remember, we're after measuring viscosity by measuring this moment. So we can solve, we can rearrange this and solve for dynamic viscosity we get mu equals 3m sine theta 2 pi omega r cubed. Now there's one final little note here is that this doesn't apply for really any theta that there's there's the requirement that theta be small so that sine theta for small theta is about equal to theta, so we get mu equal to 3m theta over 2 pi omega r cubed. And that's the answer. As an aside, you can repeat this analysis for the fixed bottom surface. We've done this force integration or moment integration on the cone. You can repeat it for the bottom surface because it should have the same total moment. And if you do that, you get a slightly different answer because the uh, assumption of a linear velocity profile is not exactly correct. But for small theta, you do end up with exactly the same answer. So that completes the solution of uh, this problem. Hi, I thought I'd just uh, show you at the end of this example an actual product, uh, an actual viscometer that uses the same approach to measure the viscosity of fluids. Here's a, a short video. This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to David Larson from Brookfield Engineering and he's going to take us through their DV2 Pro viscometer. Thanks Cameron. This is our, uh, our Brookfield Engineering Labs. This is our most common model. It's the DV2 Plus viscometer. I'm just going to quickly take a measurement of viscosity. This unit works on a uh, spring torque basis, so we're measuring the internal friction of the fluid and giving a quick reading of viscosity and set of us. So basically, we have the spindle on and we put it in. You just have to drop it into the fluid, start the motor at the proper speeds. and let it go and it'll give you the, the measurement and viscosity. And that's as simple as that, 30 second test. And tell me Dave, what, what, what do people usually use these for? What, what industries? Cameron, we use these in all fluid labs from foods to pharmaceuticals, chemicals, um, adhesives, paints, coatings. And so most people are familiar with the Profil Viscometer. We've been doing this for 50 some years.